So with the point that we're at right now in the spring, the lily pads have just kind of come up. It's sparse enough to where you can run a bait through them pretty well, a variety of baits, but frogs work really well in this scenario. You can hear them croaking all over the bank and whatnot, but something that's almost best of both worlds, due to the fact that I'm seeing so many bluegills popping underneath these lily pads, is this little guy right here. And it's like a frog, but instead of a skirt, I've got this little prop tail on the back. It's a smaller profile, looks a lot more like a bluegill, and that's kind of what I got a hunch that these bass are feeding on. I mean, when I make a cast, it's like the shallows are just alive. There's bluegills flying out of there, there's bass flying in with their Vs. And so I'm gonna try and throw this bluegill imitator around all these bluegills and see if a bass can make the difference. So when you're fishing on top like this with a frog, you wanna make long casts. I mean, you're covering a ton of water with the top water. And in this area, I can cast pretty much 360. And so a bass can come out of nowhere. It can come out of both sides. It can come at the very end of my cast. And so I'm just combing around with this frog, covering water and trying to, you know, expose any nearby fish to this bait. They're gonna see it and hear it from a long ways. And I'm gonna see it and ultimately hear them blow up on the bait from a long ways as well. But this little prop tail on the back of this thing is subtle, but it acts the way the tail of a bluegill would, creating a little bit of vibration, unlike the skirt of a frog where it looks like frog legs. This thing looks like the tail of a bluegill. It gives a little chop and a little vibration behind it. There we go. Nice. Oh, that is fun. Get him up on top here. There we go. Thank goodness for the long rod. It's just fun switching it up from, you know, fishing the standard frog with the frog legs in the back. This is just a little bluegill imitator. And more often than not, you know, even if you're using something that looks like a frog, you know, they might mistake it for a bluegill. This is an excellent representation of what a bluegill looks like. And like I said, you get that little prop going and it's just like the fantail of a bluegill. So here's the cool thing that I noticed with this bait too, when you're bringing it through these lily pads, you know, a lot of times they'll catch on your line and will sink your frog or sink your bait. When this thing sinks and goes underwater, that little prop tail will spin a little bit. And that is just, you know, like I said, in comparison to frog legs or skirt rubber legs, they don't do a whole lot. They might pulse a little bit, but this thing spins, gives off vibration and the illusion that it's a fish, you know. There we go. Yes, get up from under that tree, buddy. Yeah, that's a good fish. Oh, that's a nice one. Look at that. Got him just hoisted out all those pads. Here comes the boat flip. Look at that bucket. Oh, yes. Man, look at the head on that guy. Oh, she's post-spawn as heck, but look at the head on that donkey. Oh, that is sick. Of course, she ate it like she should. Like I said, you get into a place where you're seeing a lot of bluegills up shallow. There's a lot of bass activity. Try a topwater lure that has the profile of a bluegill. Sometimes that's what those bass are keying on. 